Good morning, everybody. Hey, Zhang, these playing cards are great ideas. When I saw my photo on the Queen of Spades, I was curious why that choice. Right? So here's what Wikipedia says. In a fortune-telling deck, this card is considered to be a sign of intelligence. It is representative of judgment that is practical, logical, and intellectual. Wow, sounds good so far. In the game of hearts, it is a symbol of bad luck. Whoa, I'm not sure what that means. OK, so who doesn't love a logical paradox? Right? We don't know what we know. I mean, we know what we know. We know some things we don't know, such as how far the moon is from the Earth. Now, what is an unknown unknown? OK, being in a fog is kind of an unknown unknown. You have no idea what's there. You can't see clearly what lies ahead. You don't even know if there is a path to follow. Okay? All you know is, most likely, there is stuff out there. This is a metaphor for what we want to talk about. How to construct complex, real-life, global business transactions between parties coming from very different cultural value systems and organizational structures, right? So that's a typical MBA speak, everything condensed into, you know, 25 words or less. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, where am I? The challenges include known unknowns and unknown unknowns. How can conventional, rational thinking solve this problem? For a more intuitive understanding, let's try another metaphor. Who doesn't enjoy a story of unrequited passion? Please, close your eyes and imagine. This is going to sound like a children's bedtime story, but please don't fall asleep. Once upon a time, there was a prince from a modern techie world, so think contemporary Earth, who was very skilled in design and architecture. His ability to construct aesthetically beautiful and astonishingly effective concert halls was known throughout the universe. The other character in this story is a princess who lived on a mysterious planet, shrouded in clouds, so think Venus. She was famous for her seductive love songs, but those had only been heard electronically. She was also famous because no one outside her family had ever seen her in person. She had only sung at weddings of the royal family, and those were broadcast to the universe. From the very first time he heard her voice, the prince fell madly in love with the princess. He felt sure she was singing straight to his heart. He became obsessed with the idea of building the most magnificent concert hall in the entire universe, optimized specifically for her voice. But the prince had no idea how to make that happen. He couldn't obtain any information about the princess. The only available pictures showed her covered in a veil. He obsessed over the beauty he imagined. Sadly, all his attempts to contact her failed. From every angle he tried, he encountered tremendous resistance over and over again. Even letters sent directly from his father, the king, to the father of the princess were returned unanswered. He spent a year in total absorption, dreaming, designing, constructing elaborate scale models of what he imagined would be a monument to the princess. When he was physically and emotionally exhausted, close to madness, the royal doctor stepped in. What could be done? The princess's life hung in a delicate balance. The future of the realm was at stake. And you might ask, what of the princess? 
what was going on in her mind. Did she know? Did she care? OK, back to reality. Here are some visual metaphors that show a European company trying to do business in China. This is how a tourist bureau describes their city. Pristine natural beauty, friendly people, delicious healthy food, fine sense of aesthetics. This is how an American sees China. This is how most companies feel about doing business with China. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. No sense of direction, confusing signals, no sense of progress, and resistance at every turn. Our Earth appears different to different people, but it's still just one Earth. How different are we, really? This is how most companies feel about doing business in China. I got this in another one. David versus Goliath. Why can't we all just get along? So the challenge is resistance. We all resist change because, we are, because of what we don't know. What can we do to overcome this fear? So let me introduce John. Thank you, Pucci. Good morning. My company works for companies and countries. Uh, we do breakthrough, never been done before deals in China where people like you are someplace, but they want to go someplace. Uh, and in the process of doing that, Po Chi and I, we did a, a project for a Scandinavian country that we're going to share with you today. Uh, and that's uh, the core of the learning we want to impart. So, as Po Chi said, you have to cut through the fog. And then, you have to take the journey and build the bridge. Everybody get that? <laughs> the truth is, the details are not important. What is really important is the learning we want to share with you. Uh, because it applies to individual people, it applies to companies, and although this example that Pochi and I worked together on was a country, the process is always the same. It starts with a promise. We make a promise to our client, the Scandinavian country, that we are going to try and get them from where they are to where they want to be. And it ends up with a story that we're sharing with you today. Don't tell the Scandinavians, but when we took the job, we weren't sure we could do the job. But my company has been taking jobs that no one's ever done before for 20 years. So we're quite comfortable with unknown unknowns and known unknowns. So every client wants the same thing you want. They want to be somewhere better, bigger. And this Scandinavian country, which was doing good business with China, knew that they could do better and bigger. And they came to us and they said, look, we're one of the first countries that recognize China, but we know we can do better. We know we can do We just don't know how. So the fog for them was everything they were doing was not enough. And I don't know if you've had that feeling, but I have that feeling all the time. So what we did with them was to understand where we had to go on a journey. But before going, we needed to work together to get ready. So when your client is a country with politicians and bureaucrats, they're very risk adverse. So we knew what we didn't know, which is that things were holding us back. Things that Pochi and I call circles of resistance. And those circles of existence, resistance exist in the country, in the company, and in the individuals that comprise the country. So understanding those circles of resistance, those fears, and dealing with them in a systematic way is the critical dimension of the process. So let me share with you some of the things we learned about the, the unknowns. 
In this country, we thought we were in the clean tech business because, as you know, Scandinavia is one of the cleanest, most efficient uh, areas in the world. But we discovered that there was no real consciousness or institutionalization of clean tech in China. What was important to China was efficiency. So we started in the clean tech business in Scandinavia and we ended up in the efficiency business in China. And that fundamental shift occurred in the process of talking and learning with people in Scandinavia and with Chinese. We also thought we were in the super tanker business with large multinational companies. No, it didn't work out that way because they don't need help doing bigger and better. We were actually in the small boat business for SMEs and they were fundamentally different and they had fundamentally different weaknesses, strengths, fears, and attributions. So again, there were quite a lot of unknowns. However, I have to tell you, we were very surprised that once we got preparation, once we got alignment, once we had the government and the small boat SMEs ready, and we went to China to find out if they were interested in working with us on efficiency, the interconnectivity and the enthusiasm and the dynamism in the Chinese system reduced the fear, reduced the risk, the politicians, the companies, and the transactions proceeded smoothly and are now happening in a way they've never happened before. Okay, thank you, John. <clears throat> I'd just like to recap what we learned from a slightly different perspective. What we learned was a process that works because of a meaningful story. What are real value propositions acknowledged by both sides? A way forward built on relationships that can last. The process is one of transforming fear into trust to make collaboration possible. Right? We need to shine a light on these unknown unknowns, making them at least known unknowns, which would make them more tangible and therefore negotiable. To make the story work, someone has to connect the cultures. So the moral of our stories is that we can learn to get along, get along with each other, we just have to see the world through many lenses to sort out what truly makes sense for everyone. It is possible. This is an adventure into the unknown, a learning journey. We have to see what it means to be aligned, to bridge our differences. Our differences make us feel separated because we don't understand each other. What we don't understand makes us feel uncertain about how to act. Uncertainty makes us afraid. So why are we so fearful? As Winston Churchill said during World War II, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. The chaotic state of our world today demands a new kind of leadership. We are in a relationship and knowledge economy where connectivity is the new currency. The ability to make effective connections is the real power that cuts through the fog of uncertainty. Thank you. <laughs>